In this video, we review how the internal energy depends on the conditions. As we know, uh, the conditions that a sample is in uh, determines the physical state, and uh, the variables of this physical state are number of moles, pressure, temperature, and volume. Now, if we assume constant composition, and that means that you're going to have a pure substance like a gas with no transformations, either phase transitions or chemical reactions, then uh, the composition will not change. So it's not necessary, necessary really to study the dependence of the internal energy on the number of moles. So we're going to focus here uh, on understanding the variation of the internal energy on the rest of the variables, which are temperature, pressure, and volume. Now, uh, it's quite natural to study how uh, the internal energy depends on volume and temperature, and because there's an equation of state that relates those with uh, the pressure, uh, uh, studying the internal energy as a function of volume and temperature is actually um, uh, useful enough to understand how the internal energy changes with the conditions. So for us, uh, what we're going to do is examine how the internal energy depends on both volume and temperature. Okay. All right, so to study the sensitiv sensitivity of a function on variables, uh, you have to do this, uh, you have to take first derivatives, because the first derivative contains uh, how that function depends on a particular variable. Okay, so for this particular function, the internal energy, depending on temperature and volume, the total derivatives are going to be as follows. Uh, you're going to have first the first derivative of the internal energy with respect to volume at constant temperature, differential of V, plus uh, the, first, so the derivative of the internal energy with respect to temperature with the other variable frozen, differential uh, of T. Okay, so that's, that's the function that tells you the sensitivity of the internal energy on volume and temperature. Now the question is, well, what are these uh, uh, coefficients that you have right there? Well, uh, so here you have that uh, this is something that we have studied already. That's simply the heat capacity at constant volume, and that's simply just a measure of the sensitivity of a substance to change its temperature uh, when uh, some energy is transferred uh, as heat to that sample. Okay, uh, that's the heat capacity at constant volume, and we've uh, already seen that in earlier videos. Something that is new is this uh, variation of the internal energy with the volume, which we have not studied. Okay, so uh, we call this the internal pressure, and we're going to call it uh, as pi sub t. Okay, we're going to denote it with a pi sub t. Okay, so that is just how the internal energy of a substance is going to change if you change the volume at constant temperature. Okay, so let's think about this uh, a little more here. Uh, the idea here is that, um, again, uh, that pi of t is just how the internal energy depends with volume at constant temperature. Okay, so let's actually use a couple of simple examples to illustrate how this works. Let's assume that we're uh, talking about an ideal gas, and uh, just for simplicity, we're going to assume that this is a monoatomic ideal gas. Well, we have studied that for an ideal gas, the internal energy only depends on the temperature, and as a matter of fact, for um, that monoatomic ideal gas, the internal energy would be 3 halves kVT, that would be the average internal energy, but that is how um, you use the equipartition of energy principle to write the internal energy, constant temperature. Okay, notice that, again, that internal energy does not depend on volume at all, so the first derivative of a constant with respect to volume is going to be equal to zero. Okay, and again, this only happens if uh, you have an ideal gas, okay, where well, there's no attractions or repulsions or they are negligible between gas particles. In reality, uh, once you have attractions and repulsions between gas particles, this uh, internal pressure is not going to be zero. Instead, uh, the sign of that internal pressure is going to report on whether the attractions that you have are repulsive or attractive. Okay, so let's think about it for a little bit. Right, we're going to assume here that you have two gas particles and they are attracting each other. Right, so they're pulling uh, uh, each other close. Now, what you're trying to measure here with internal pressure is uh, uh, the change in energy as you increase the volume of the substance, right? Now, if there's attractions taking place, then 
the idea here is that if you try to increase the volume, uh, you're going to need to um, uh, supply some energy to be able to separate those particles. Okay, so uh, notice that in that case, again, if you want to uh, increase the volume, if you want to make this denominator positive, that is going to cost you some energy because the particles are holding each other back. Okay, so uh, when attractions dominate, then your uh, pi of t, your internal pressure, is larger than zero, again, uh, if attractions dominate. Okay? And the reverse is going to be true for repulsions. Okay, so now assume <coughs> that these particles are repelling each other. Okay, so they want to get away from each other. And you're trying to calculate here how the internal energy changes with volume, right? So notice that those particles want to separate from each other. Uh, so you increase the volume, then those particles are going to have more room to move. That should be stabilizing. So what happens is that when you increase the volume, you make this positive, and the internal energy goes down. Right, and uh, that means that this pi of t will be negative. Okay. Uh, if repulsions dominate. Okay. So we 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 have seen now a couple of examples for what this internal pressure is for an ideal gas, zero, and then for a real gas where you have attractions and repulsions. Now the question is, can you measure this? Uh, and the answer is yes. We uh, you can measure it. Uh, and Joule was the first one who tried uh, to measure exactly uh, uh, how this um, internal pressure works. Uh, he failed, okay, but we're gonna try to see what the setup was uh, in that field experiment, okay, so that you can see a little bit of how we think today about measuring those internal pressures. All right, so uh, the setup for the Joule experiment was like this. You have um, a bath of water or in a liquid and you're going to uh, submerge a system that is composed of two uh, bulbs, right, that are connected by a stopcock. And here you have a vacuum uh, in the uh, right hand side of the container and then the gas in the left hand side of the container. Uh, and you're going to be measuring here changes in temperature uh, to that bath uh, when you open. Uh, uh, this uh, valve so that the gas expands. Okay, all right, so uh, here we have the equations that are pertinent. First, you have the first law. Okay, differential of u is equal to differential of q plus differential of work. Okay, all right, but notice that because you're expanding against the vacuum, there's actually no work being done. You don't have an opposing force, so this is simply zero. Okay, which means that you can uh, determine the change in a draw energy uh, with uh, simply measuring the uh, energy transferred as heat. At the same time, we have that the total uh, derivative of the internal energy is just the internal pressure, differential of V, plus the heat capacity, differential of T. Okay, but notice that in this setup, you're submerging this gas into a large bath of water. And you do that to control the temperature so that the process is isothermal. And if the process is isothermal, what that means is that this term is actually zero. Okay, so, well, here you have a way to measure the internal pressure. Right? Notice that this is what you want to determine. Okay, so, well, if you're able to determine the energy transfer as heat uh, from the uh, gas to the, uh, from the bulb to the water or the other way around, then you know what the uh, change in volume is, um, and you should be able to actually, uh, uh, able to determine exactly how this works. Okay, so uh, unfortunately the problem is that when you have setups like this, uh, the energy transfers as, as heat are actually very, very tiny, and uh, the thermometers that you'll, you'll have at the time did, did not have enough precision to be able to uh, really measure changes in temperature that are uh, sufficiently large so that you can have here some sizable energy transfer as heat and be able to determine your internal pressure. But today, with better technology, we certainly can do this, and, and uh, this is how you could determine uh, internal, internal pressures for substances. All right, let me summarize this video. Uh, in this video, we have seen the variation of the internal energy with respect to volume and temperature. The variation of the internal energy with respect to volume is um, <coughs> specified by the internal pressure, and the variation of the internal energy with temperature is specified by the heat capacity at constant volume.